When I knelt to pray early this morning, my mind, my mind could not help but go back. For just a few years, it's been a little over eight years that we buried my father, who was the bishop of this church and pastored here for 58 years, and uh, an awesome man. And, uh, you know, I was just praying, and I stopped, and I said, now, Dad, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but here's what I want to tell you, and I just talked to him a little while this morning, and uh, I don't know if he can hear me or not, but I can tell you this. There was a man that died, the Bible said, and he started talking when he was in hell, and I thank God I'm not there, and, uh, and there was answers given to him, so Dad, if you can hear me today, thank you for being a great dad. Thank you for raising me right. Thank you for investing in my life. He was my mentor. He was my best friend. He was, he was such an awesome dad to me. And I could say a lot, a lot of things about him today. He was a man's man. He, uh, he wasn't a sissy. Wasn't nothing sissy about him. And uh, he could... Uh, he could do about anything he set his mind to do. Loved to hunt, loved to fish, taught us boys how to be boys and then how to be men. So I just want to, in remembrance of my dad and a man that most of you know, I just want to say, Dad, I honor you today. And some of you are here today without your dads, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough thing. As a matter of fact, and uh, I wouldn't embarrass my friend Toby for anything, but Toby's been like my son for the last 12 years, that he's uh, provided music in this church, and he's done a phenomenal job, and I love Toby Stanley like a son. <laughs> he was in my office today, and we were just chatting. He said, you know, when Father's Day came around when I was a kid, he said, I, it was always hurtful to me because I didn't know my father. He didn't, never met his father. And he said all the kids would start making the crafts and making the things to take to their dad, and he said, I... I would just feel out of place on Father's Day. And uh, I said, Toby, I understand that there's a lot of people like you because dads are missing in, in, in a lot of America. Dads are missing. They're missing in the home. And I'll say some things about that in just a few minutes. But, but uh, Toby, you moved me today because when he started to leave, he just, you know, as only Toby can. And he turned around and said, thank you for being my dad. Thank you for investing in my life. So I have a boy back here today that is my biological son, and I have another one right here on this keyboard today who is my, my son, and I love him very much. And I got some others around here. I'm old enough to be a lot of you's daddy, and uh, some of you I'd like to tan your hide, but uh, thank God for Father's Day. If you're hurting today, just know there will be a sweet by and by. And uh, some of the things I will say today will apply to you. Some of them may not. But I just feel like I need to say a few things before we go and celebrate our dads today. I celebrate today because we have godly, wonderful people that have, have made wonderful, awesome fathers. And you're in this house today. And I salute you. I salute you. I salute you for being in the house of God on Father's Day. Amen. God bless you today. Praise God. Could I, could I talk to you about God's idea of a dad? Could I just tell you today that God does. He has an idea of a dad because he wrote it in his word. In Psalms 103, the Bible talked about in verse 13, it said, Like a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Now, in the Message Bible, which I don't use often, but sometimes I do, it says this, as parents feel for their children, God feels for those who fear him. As parents, and so we can relate to that. We can understand how, you know, if you're, you, you hear the, the cry of your child, you know your child is hurting, you know something's uh, not right, and you, you, you know that that feeling, and so you reach for them. And the Bible said, as parents feel for their children, God feels for those that fear him. In Ephesians, the Bible said, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. 
the New Living Testament said, And now a word to you, fathers, don't make your children angry by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with discipline and instruction approved by the Lord. That's God's idea of what a dad ought to be. Brother Jay stood up here and read some some things that men should be and dads should be, and every one of them was correct. And, And we need courageous men and godly men and men with backbone. Does anybody here remember when men were really men? Man, I don't want to get off on a, on a wrong trail and chase a rabbit, but if we ever needed men in this world, we need men in this world. And men need to man up. Just a thought. Somebody asked me on the way into church today, there was a nine-year-old that had a sex change this week. Whose fault is that? I said, his parents ought to be hung up to dry. And whatever doctor did the surgery, he ought to be without a license and he ought to be in prison. God made a man and a woman and thank God for real men in our world. Amen? I'm not saying that for applause. I'm saying that because this is where we are. Suddenly we're all there. It's not like we're just saying, oh, well, in the future, you got to be careful. No, no, no. It's here now. And, sir, to be a godly dad, you got to pity your children. You got to love your children. And you got to administer discipline without anger. And you've got to guide them and lead them in the way of the Lord. Here's what a bad idea of a dad, one that's invisible. Because when dads disappear, the home is hurt. The kids are hurt. Amen. I, I, I saw a family this morning that I knew dad wasn't around. And I saw them taking pictures. And I hopped in the picture. And they said, our dad's not here. I said, but I'm here. And I'm not your biological dad, but I'm your spiritual dad. And I love you because you're important to God. You're important to this church. Somebody ought to shout amen. You see, when a man becomes invisible, he's a bad dad. When he's not there for his children, he's not a good dad. I'm just going to be honest today. Amen. When you see an inconsistent dad, you see a dad that is a failure. You know what we need? We need rock-solid performance by men who know how to talk to God and get godly instruction and walk the way of the world and not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. Because let me tell you, what you do is going to far outmeasure what you say. Anybody with me today? A man's got to be responsible for his family. I read in the book, if a, man, if a man don't provide for his family, the Bible said he's worse than an infidel. Now, let me tell you something. I don't believe that's just bread and cheese. I don't believe that's just beans and cornbread. I don't believe that's just putting clothes on your back. I believe you ought to provide godly leadership. I believe you ought to provide the priesthood of your home, being the head of your home, and walking before the Lord every day. Kids need to learn how to pray from you, Dad. Kids need to learn how to give from you, Dad. I know you've heard me tell this before, but it's a story that always, it always just amazes me. When, when little Johnny was on his way home from church with his parents, and the dad started in with a preacher. He preached too long. And I wish they would sing better. And I don't like that song they sang. And sister so-and-so always has to have something to say. And he was just running down the service. And little Johnny was in the back seat listening. And he watched his dad giving the offering that day. And finally he leaned up on the seat and he said, Dad, I didn't think it was such a bad show for a quarter. Your kids are watching. Your kids know what you're doing. 
your kids. You must manage your family well. In the NIV, 1 Timothy 3 and 4 said, you must manage your own family well and see that your children obey him with proper respect. You've got to give that dad. A great dad ministers to his family. A great dad is there for his family. A great dad is loving to his family. Parents, don't come down too hard on your kids. Because the Bible said you will crush their spirit. Go read it. It's Colossians 3.21. The Bible said, parents, don't come down too hard on your children. You'll crush their spirit. He ministers to his family by love and giving them love. I never did understand. I was thinking about this this morning. My dad, let me tell you something. When you did get a whipping, you knew you got a whipping. And if, and if, Giving a kid's whipping, child abuse, my dad should have been in Angola. Because I got plenty of them. I got some I deserved and some I deserved more. You thought I was going to say some I didn't deserve. I deserved every one I got. But I, I, I remember, <laughs> this was crazy to me, but I remember this so well. I can remember him taking me in that bedroom chase and he'd say, now, son, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. And I'm thinking, are you crazy? He said, he say, it's going to hurt me more than it hurts you. I told somebody, as a matter of fact, at the men's meeting last night, we were, we were just having a good time reminiscing about old times. And, and uh, I said, uh, you know, back in those days, our, our frivolity and our fun and our our stunts, it, it, it wasn't breaking the law, and it wasn't, I, I did break the law a time or two, but uh, most time it was just speeding, and uh, you know, that kind of stuff, but I told somebody about waking up one morning, and I said, have you ever woke up at three o'clock in the morning getting a beating? Now, if you've never done that, that's, as an old friend of mine many years ago would say, that's an experience. I woke up one morning about 3 o'clock in the morning and a belt was flying and I was getting me one more thrashing. And you know, you just wake out of a dead sleep and you can't think, why am I getting this beating for? I knew it was for something and I said, "What, Dad, what, what's wrong? Me and Mike both, we were getting a beating. And he said, you know what's wrong. Man, he tore us up. Well, the long story is, or the short story is, and Wayman, you'll know because you was there. Me and Wayman Rice and Roy Kane, Jimmy Masters, Alan Busby, and Mike Chance, we got in a 56 Ford and thought how, how fun it would be, and we drove out to the 165 overpass and had us a box of water balloons, and we was just throwing them off the bridge, just being boys. And, uh, you know, I probably should have signed up for the Chicago Cubs because I'm the guy that threw the one that hit the windshield, and we didn't know it burst a man's windshield. And you didn't know a water balloon would do that. Well, I didn't either, and I'm still not sure about it. But, but we, we, we ran off down the hill, jumped in the 56 Ford and ride by him, waved at him. Remember that, Wayman? We thought we was just being cool. Well, they took us on home. It wasn't long before the deputy stopped the car. And guess what those boys, Wayman Rice, if I find out you did this, I'm going to be mad. But somebody told on me. And they called my daddy. Now, when you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning getting a beating for throwing water balloons, that ain't fun. I paid $123 for that windshield, and that's the only time I ever had to go to the juvenile office in my life. But I went, and I'll never forget it. God looked me in my eye. My daddy was sitting there with me, and he said, Son, did you learn anything from this? I said, Yes, sir, I did. He said, What would you learn? I said, Sir, I learned the difference between a spanking and a whipping. And that's a truth. But my dad made sure I did things right. And if I wasn't right, he whipped me with love. But he loved me to the day he died. And I loved him to the day he died. But here's the facts, folks. It's because of godly leadership and godly love and godly discipline and godly everything in our home. My dad and my mom taught me how to pray. My mom and my dad taught me how to be faithful. My dad, my dad is the one that was with me here and we pastored together for several years before he passed away about 20 
56 to be exact. But, but I'm just going to tell you right now, only because of my dad am I standing in this pulpit today. He was the preacher when I was a kid that preached hell so hot you could smell the smoke. He, he, he's the one. Y'all know him. Y'all, let, me, let me tell you something. He'd line you out and never bat an eye. Well, let me tell you, you ought to have been his son because he did us the same way. But today I stand thankful for a godly man in my life that guided me. I never saw him drink a drink. I never saw him light a cigarette. I never heard him curse a man out. I never heard him do those kind of things or seen him do those kind of things. He never came in late at night drunk. He never beat his wife. He never beat his kids. He was a godly leader in our home. Oh, that we might understand what God is looking for in the 21st century and that is godly men to lead godly kids to do the right thing in an ungodly world. You're right, Jay. Ordinary men have to do ordinary things, extraordinary things in the day that we live in. And ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know it, we are not living in an ordinary day. We're not. We're not there. My mind went today to Joshua chapter 4 when I was talking to the Lord about what to say to this congregation today. The Bible talks about Joshua getting 12 men to get stones out of the middle of the Jordan when they went over and placed them on the other side. And, and, and he made this statement to them. He said, he said we're going to, to place these stones on the other side of Jordan, a, a stone for every tribe. And he said, these stones are going to be a memorial. And he said, I, I, and I'm paraphrasing now, but he said, I want you to bring your children back and show them these stones. I want them to see what God did for you. I want them to remember what God did for you. And I thought about that, and I've, I've, I've used that many times, at, especially at baby dedications, because we are, we are building and we're, we're placing memories, but my, I could not get away from, from the thought of what we are doing as men on, on this June 18th, 2023. What are we doing for memory's sake? What are we doing and in investing in our families that if the Lord tarries 10 years from now, 20 years from now, what can our kids turn around and say, oh, yeah, my dad, my dad, he, he taught me this, and he took me here, and my dad, he put this in me. And what I'm just asking you as individual men, what are you doing for memory's sake? What are you doing that you can take your kids back to? See, I could take you back to the horse pasture. I could take you back to double bridges over in West Monroe. We didn't have no swimming pool and if you don't know where Double Bridges is, it's out on, New, out on Natchitoches Road, and there's two bridges, and I don't know if it's still there, but we'd park the car or the truck on the road and run back through the woods for a ways, and there's a little pool of water, and we always like to go swimming in Double Bridges. Is that still there? Does anybody see? Y'all don't even know. But I can tell you, about vacations to the Smokies. I can tell you about church trips. I can tell you about youth camps. I can tell you about youth rallies. I can tell you about riding old buses and then breaking down every time. I can tell you about prayer meetings. I can tell you about revivals. I can tell you what I was brought up as a child. I cut my teeth in a Pentecostal church and I, I, I don't regret that not one minute. I cut my teeth in apostolic teaching and powerful worship and and people receiving the Holy Ghost and people getting healed. I cut my teeth on holy living. You say, preacher, why do you talk? Because that's what my life was when I was being brought up. I'm asking you today. I'm just asking you as an individual. I didn't know who was going to be here this morning. So I didn't prepare it for just anybody individually. But I, I thought today, God, what are we doing on this day, in this hour, in this generation? What are our days? doing that we can take our children back to and they can say oh yeah, oh yeah when the world was was uh, 
making big to do over transgenders and, and we got rainbows everywhere. God help us the only rainbow that I'm going to honor is the one that God sent after the flood that said I won't do it again. I don't know where you are today but we need somebody to stand up and make some memories for the next generation. I'm sorry I'm just an old fogey and you know, I'm sorry if that's the way you feel, but I can't adjust to this day that we're living in. And furthermore, I don't even want to. You can have that garbage because all of that stuff is directly against the Word of God. I'm going to stand up and preach what's right. I'm going to do what the Lord said do. If I'm the only one left, I'm not giving in to that business because that's the devil's desire is to get that infiltrated into the church and destroy your children and destroy our kids. I'm telling you right now, somebody's got to stand up. I give glory to anybody that will stand up against the the deluge of sin that's coming against our generation. We need people, and especially strong men, that will stand for the things of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sir, it's not about fame or popularity. It's not about sports. It's not about education. It's, not, it's all about getting your kids out of here to heaven. I was somewhere the other day, and I was at a place where I knew the people were making a lot of money. Help me out, Toby. I knew. I looked at my wife driving down the road after that, and I said, what does it profit a man? You gain the whole world, and you lose your own soul. Over the gym, Yoy. He's gone to be with the Lord. But Jim Yoey founded the Boys Ranch. And, and he, was, he was a pioneer of Pentecost. He was quite a gentleman. But I remember him coming to our church many years ago, and he, he took that scripture, what does it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? He said, I'm going to change it a little bit. And he wasn't trying to change the word, word of God, but he said, what does it profit a man? if he gained the whole world and he lose his own children. What does it profit a man? So if you're, if you're working all those hours and your kids are lacking, you need to make an adjustment. If you're going away from home all the time and your wife and kids don't see much of you, you probably need to make an adjustment. Y'all may leave mad and may never come back. While you're here, I'm going to teach you what the Word of the Lord says. Because your family is most important. Let me tell you, in this order, you ready? Here's what God made. He made a man, then a woman, then a family, then a church. In that order, your family, your children is more important than any entity, any job, any hobby, any entertainment, anything. Your family is more important than anything else. So, Dad, it's your job. It's your job. It's not anybody else's job. It's your job. Gather your family around you. Gather your kids up close. Make sure they know you love them. Speak into their life. Get them to the house of God. Teach them how to live right. Because here's what happens, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close, and I, I say a whole lot. I got a, I got a lot of things today I re- really want to say, but I'm, I'm not going to say them. The influence of dad is... It's, it's, it's bigger than I could ever tell you. Matter of fact, I pulled out some statistics that I, that I read here a while back. And what happens when a dad is, is not in the home? The incarceration rate, young men who grow up in homes without a father are twice as likely 
to wind up in jail for those with a two-parent family. Are you hearing me? I didn't write that statistic, but it's there. You go look it up. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. Probably more than that now since I wrote all this down several years ago. 85% of all children that exhibit behavioral disorders are from fatherless homes. Think about that. 71% of all high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. 70% of juveniles in state-operated institutions come from fatherless homes. And the likelihood that a young male will engage in criminal activity doubles if he is raised without a father and triples if he lives in a neighborhood with a high concentration of single parents. What does that tell you? It tells you that you are so important. God gave you those children. God gave you that family. And that you have a solemn responsibility today to minister to your home and to be the dad God called you to be. Stand all over the house with me today. You see, here's the end results. And please don't think I'm I'm charging you with, and I'm prophesying bad news. Uh, that's not it. But but we got to be real. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to be real. Come on, say it with me. We got to be real. Here's the real fact. You ready? What you do today has consequences tomorrow. And what you don't do today has consequences tomorrow. So I've lived long enough. I know I don't look my age. But I've lived long enough to see people who shrugged it off and didn't think it was very important. I've lived long enough to watch him come back and say, I just wish I had some things that I could do all over again with my kids, my family. Man called me yesterday, hadn't called me in years, years. Lives in another state. You wouldn't know him if I told you who he was. Talked to me for a long time on the phone. He made this statement to me. He said, if I had some things to do all over again, I'd do them different. I'd do them different. And all of us are that way to a degree. But here's what, look, if your job don't pan out, you can get another job. Come on now. If your car don't run right, you can get another car. Don't look at me like that. There's some things in life that don't pan out. You just start all over. Anybody ever started all over? You know, hey, people go bankrupt. They recover. People lose everything they got. They recover. You got one shot, one shot, one shot at raising your kids. You don't get another shot. This is it. You got one shot at having influence over your family. This is it. So I encourage you today, stand up. As a matter of fact, I almost took from my text this morning two words, man up. I almost took that from my text today. Just man up. Come on, just say that with me. Man up. It's not hard to do. Just man up. Come on, get a little hair on your chest, sir. Just act like you're a man. My God. Quit talking like this. Don't come around me limp-wristed either because I can't handle that. You shake my hand, you grip my hand. Don't, don't, don't look. I don't want to shake hands with a fish. I love you. That's why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. You got David Masters, you sit right over there one time. I think it was on Father's Day, and when it was over with, he texted me. He said, you got to get you a, a pair of pointed cowboy boots to preach like that. I got them on today, Dave. Amen. But listen to me. I'm not doing it to be entertaining. I'm telling you the truth. Those things that I've talked about today matter. They matter. They matter. It's more important than money in the bank. It's more important 
than, than clothes or shoes or cars or entertainment. Okay, y'all know where I'm at. 